So you may be in the market for a new CPU, you might be into gaming, you might be into video editing, or you might be into other things. We're not going to talk about those other things. But what we have here is a list of six different CPUs in no particular order because they're all really good value for money. It just depends on your budget and who you are as an individual. Now another thing as well, in this list is only CPUs that are readily available to buy right now. I'm not talking about one-time deals that I usually get in bargain hunts like these. But with that aside, get your thick wallet ready because after this video, it's still gonna remain thick. So here we are with the list. It's gonna be new and used because they both represent pretty good value at the moment. You can go new if you wanna get the warranty and you wanna get in straight away, no questions asked. You've got the used if you wanna save money get better value for money in my opinion, especially with the prices of DDR4 memory. Though, coming in at number six is the i5-8400, and I will reiterate, no particular order with the numbering, it's just, I'm listing six CPUs. But we have this CPU coming in at 180 US dollars, six cores, six threads, latest IPC from Intel, very efficient CPU, also comes with a cooler. You can mount this on a H310 motherboard, which comes in for around $50 as well bringing some incredible value for money. DDR4 memory, not too overpriced at the moment, managed to find two four gigabyte sticks for $75. So this whole combo is a pretty good bare bones kit. And now another thing is I will mention, you might wanna get your stuff now because when the RTX 2000 series hits the market, you don't know what pricing will happen, especially when those mid range cards hit like the 2060, do you wanna be one who's overpaying for your DDR4 memory, your motherboard, and your CPU then, or you can buy it now and then wait for those graphics cards to hit because the CPUs aren't generally getting better. As we've seen this over the last few years, IPC hasn't really improved and they don't really affect gaming too much at 1080p, high settings at the very least, or even 1440p. With that aside, number five, Ryzen 5 2600. For all those AMD circle jerkers out there, of course, I'm gonna put an AMD CPU on the list. This one coming in at $165 includes a pretty decent cooler as well. Good thing is you can get an A320 motherboard that does support the 2000 series CPUs. Now this is important. If you're going with an A320 option, you do wanna get a motherboard that makes sure it's 2000 series ready. Otherwise, you're gonna get headaches. Might wanna go for a B450 motherboard. I'll put some extra links in the description below anyway. But this CPU with this motherboard at this price point is phenomenal value for money. Again, DDR4 memory, if you're on a budget, just get an eight gigabyte kit for now for 75 bucks and you can call it a day. But the potential versus the i5-8400, sort of different strokes for different folks. Ryzen 5 2600, more suited if you wanna do a bit of video editing, want that extra performance when it comes to workstation productivity. But the i5-8400, I think is a better buy for just straight gaming, but also streaming as well, because you can take advantage now of that onboard HD graphics with Intel QuickSync which a lot of streaming software does now support, and that will take a big burden off your CPU. And now we're moving into number four. We're starting to get closer to that uncharted territory, the place where no one else dare goes, but we'll start off with an i7. We've got four cores, eight threads on this i7-3770. It's coming in at around $110 shipped to your door, because you can get $4 off with a coupon. That's pretty good value right there. Now, H61 motherboard, $40. You can pick these up so cheap. Of course, DDR3 memory, you can generally get this locally pretty cheap or even source it online, much cheaper than you otherwise could with DDR4 memory. So this is the benefit of going used. You're gonna be saving money on a few different fronts. And of course, if you don't live in the US and you can't get those prices, then this is worldwide shipping. So if you're in a remote area in the world and you don't have a computer store that's giving out good prices, then this is one option to consider. And it's got the i7 moniker as well, which is great for resale value. And here we are finally at number three, where we're starting to move on into the Xeon territory. Some of the best value for money, money can buy. E5, 2690, this is going for $119 shipped to your door, eight cores, 16 threads, and they will boost up to 3.3 gigahertz on all cores. We've got a massive amount of level three cache as well, but you will need an X79 motherboard, and I do recommend getting a decent one, not one of the one and boards that go for 80 bucks. If you're gonna go with the one board, at least get the real top of the line one for $120 plus. But seriously, if you're a video editor on a budget, the Xeons do support ECC, registered memory and this is a big benefit of this combo in particular video editing with lots of memory you can save a lot of money going with this eight core xeon 16 threads coupled with an x79 motherboard some ecc registered memory 
and you'll be having happy days. Though of course when it comes to gaming this CPU is no slouch. It will perform really well, does have the Sandy Bridge IPC which is still pretty relevant even in today's titles. And coming in at number 2 is the X3470. These Xeons, I love them. $27, 4 cores, 8 threads. And the good news here is that the motherboards as well, H55 and P55 motherboards are dirt cheap. You can get them for around $50 shipped to your door, not to mention they're readily available when it comes to deals hunting. I saw one of these boards going for like $10 locally, I just didn't have a chance to grab one. Uh, of course DDR3 memory being cheaper than DDR4 memory, you've got that benefit as well. And these Xeons are overclockable too, so if you're into tinkering and I've got guides here on the channel, you can get a lot of performance on a budget, possibly making this CPU the best value for money if you know how to overclock. Up to of course mid-range graphics cards like GTX 1060s, after that you may experience some bottlenecks depending on the game. And coming in at number one here is the E3 1270 Xeon chip aka the i7-2600 on a budget. Coming in at $75 the i7 variant will cost you over $100. So there's an automatic like $30 savings and you haven't had to do anything. Now the motherboards, of course, as we mentioned before, H61 motherboards going for around $40, DDR3 memory, cheap as well. DDR4 memory is overpriced. So that makes the DDR3 option a great play. Now I will state this with a lot of the CPUs on the list. I think the Ryzen 5 2600 and also the X3470, they were the only CPUs that are overclockable here on this list. And the reason why I didn't put a whole lot of overclockable CPUs in the list is because I've been selling quite a few PCs and a lot of people don't know what a BIOS is, let alone how to overclock and what even overclocking is. And so I'm guessing that besides the loyal tech yes citizens, and I love you guys, you guys are really open-minded, enthusiastic about tech. But besides that, the person who randomly stumbles on this video and they just don't know what overclocking is, this is a list that's pretty solid. I mean, the Ryzen 5 2600, if you've got a B450 motherboard, and also the X3470, they're overclockable. But even if you don't overclock them, you're still going to get good performance, hence why they made the list here today. Now, a CPU that I didn't mention before getting on out of here that does deserve a worthy mention is, of course, the X5675. You can pick these Xeons up for $30, but the problem is, is that X58 motherboards are really starved at the moment. As soon as they come up for a good price, I know there's always people snapping them. So they're more like rare in terms of actually sourcing them. There's not X58 motherboards that are readily available and the ones that are, are really overpriced. Uh, so that didn't really make the list here today. What I wanted to look for was CPUs that are readily available with motherboards as well, and you can get them for a pretty good price. Anyway, with that aside, I hope you enjoyed today's list here today. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. If you have any questions or comments about this list or you want to add some CPUs of your own, then be sure to drop a comment in the comment section below. Now, I'm sure there's people going to say, where's the old school AMD CPUs like the FX CPUs and the Phenoms? They're overpriced, especially when you compare them to the Xeons. You're getting ripped off if you go that route. I mean, one-time deals, again, that's different to the, today's list. But if you go with an old FX 8350 for 100 bucks, why would you do that to yourself? You're just wasting money. And same with a Phenom for 50 bucks. That's DDR2. We're going way back in time, back to the future, except in a bad way that Marty dies. Why would you do that to yourself? Anyway, all the links for the CPUs, motherboards, memory that I've mentioned here will be in the description below. Also, big thank you for reaching 300K subscribers. I love each and every one of you that have clicked that sub button. And if you haven't clicked that sub button already, then why not? Hit the bell notification as well. You get these videos as soon as they come out. And I'll catch you in another one very shortly. Peace out for now. Bye.